I love to give this problem in class, and I've, I have written this one in, in my book. So if you've read my book already, this will look familiar, but I like it because um, here it is. What's the square root of x to the 16th power? And the probably the natural answer, if you're not thinking very hard, would be x to the 4th power. It's not x to the 4th power. What if it was? Well, what does it mean to take a square root? To check a square root, you square your number back. So x to the 4th squared equals what? Well, hopefully you remember the rule of exponents. When I raise to power, I, I do what? I, I'm going to multiply 2 times 4 and get 8. Or, if you're not convinced of that, x to the 4th squared is x to the 4th times x to the 4th. And what do we do in this case? We Now we add exponents, and it's x to the 8th. So, um, since I get x to the 8th and not x to the 16th, then this is obviously wrong. So, please, please be careful about uh, those oversights. But what would it be? You know, when we check an answer, a square root, to check a square root, you raise it to the second power. Raising a number to the second power doubles the exponent, multiplies it by 2. So, it makes sense that the opposite of squaring a number, which is taking its square root, would be the opposite of multiplying by 2, it would be dividing by 2. In other words, should this be x to the 8th power? And it is, since x to the 8th squared is, by any measure you want to take, is x to the 16th. So there you go. Um, actually, you're, you're, you're taking half the exponent when you're taking the square root. And for some reason, I, textbooks, of course, regular the big publisher textbooks don't seem to mention this. They, um, they ask you to do things in other ways. But, you know, you've come this far with exponents. You've learned when to, um, hopefully you remember when to add exponents, when to subtract exponents, when to um, multiply exponents. Now we get to divide exponents. We divide exponents when you apply a radical sign. That is a division of exponents. So, now let's look at uh, another problem. What is, what is x to the tenth? Square root of x to the tenth, rather. Square root of x to the tenth is, well, if this holds up, then half, since this means half of the exponent, it's x to the fifth. And by the way, that half is, again, is very straightforward. It's nothing mysterious about it because recall that square root means one half power. And so one half of 10 is five. All right, so um, bear with me here on this. Let's, I'm gonna leave a space. Let's look at the square root of x to the 12th power. And face them up with another square root, I'm going to take half of the exponent, so that's x to the 6th power, right? All right, so now we come to a, a more interesting question. What is the square root of x to the 11th? Take half of 11, you get 5 and a half. So, so is it x to the 5 and a half power? Well, it literally is, but we don't write it that way. Um, you might think of it this way. Since I'm dividing by the index, the index is 2, even though it's not written, square root is second root. 2 goes into 11 five times with a remainder of 1. So if you think of it that way, then um, it becomes very fast to simplify these exponents. I don't know why textbooks don't tell you these things, but um, this is a division of exponents. 2 goes to 11 five times. Remainder of 1. Alright, so um, let, me, let me give you a bigger problem to look at. Here's a cube root problem. Simplify, and by the way, imagine the word simplify up here. I didn't write it, but um, that's what we're doing with these problems, is simplifying these 
these radicals, simplify the cube root, third root, of 48x to the 5th power, y to the 12th power, and z to the 7th power. <clears throat> All right, well, we have really two kinds of um, objects in here we're taking the cube root of, don't we? We have a number, 48, and then we have variables raised to integer powers. So it really calls for two different treatments here. And looking at the cube root of 48, I want to uh, break it up, uh, factor it into a, a perfect cube and another integer if I can. So you look at 48, and um, 8 is the largest perfect cube that will divide out of 48. 8 times 6. So I have the cube root of 8 times the cube root of 6. But as far as the variables, I'm going to use what we've just learned here. The cube root is one-third power. It means I'm dividing exponents by 3. So 3 goes into 5 one time with a remainder of 2. So 1 time is, is literally x to the first power. Remainder of 2 is x squared. So that's what I mean by, by dividing your exponent. 3 goes into 12 exactly 4 times. No remainder, so there's no uh, cube root of y left over. And then 3 goes into 7 2 times with a remainder of 1. So I wrote those little ones there. You, you normally don't have to, but just I wanted to uh, emphasize the, the division nature of these exponents. All right, so let's put this together. The whole parts come from here and these integer powers of x, y, and z. Cube root of 8 is 2, exactly. And then I have x, y to the fourth, and z squared. So this is what we were able to factor out of the, of the original radical. And what's left over, let's just put it back together. It's a cube root of 6, x squared, and z. So as long as you end up with your powers in, under the radical less than your index, then at least you're done simplifying that part of it. Now, I can't, uh, I can't simplify the cube root of 6, so this is as far as we can take it. The, the problem is completed.